Welcome back to Facing South Florida. I'm Lauren Pastrana. Jim DeFiti is off today. Our neighbors in the Bahamas are still in the early stages of recovery from the damage done by Hurricane Dorian. When Dorian moved out, relief was quick to flow in, but inevitably it will slow down. Photojournalist Mike Zimmer was recently in the Bahamas not only to document the damage, but to speak with survivors and get a feel for what they need and what we can do to help. Here's what some of those survivors told him. Certain places down here where the water was sink down, houses was underwater. And people was like surviving, trying to survive, to stay alive and things. Some get blew away with the water in the ocean. And there were some people in the house in the back. I don't remember the exact amount. I think it was about seven persons, between six to seven persons in the house. And we haven't seen them. So. There's a good chance. They, you know for a fact they stayed there during yeah, the storm. Yeah, we know for a fact that they stayed there. So our assumption is they probably got washed out at, out to sea or something like that. Sadly, so many stories much like that one. Mike Zimmer, yeah. thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah. Now, you captured a lot of images. They're stunning and sad. Homes basically flattened, businesses as well. Yeah. The infrastructure along much of the smaller islands destroyed and families, as you just mentioned, some torn apart. You're from here in South Florida. You live yeah. here. You have seen your share of hurricanes and the devastation that they could cause. But let's talk about the sheer damage done in some of these islands in the Bahamas and how that compares to what you've seen in the past. So in the remote areas of Freeport, where we were about 60 miles out in High Rock, it was, you know, it was devastated. I mean, most of the homes, the majority of the homes were gone. So, you know, to look at that and compare it to an Andrew or something like that was very much the case. When we were in downtown Freeport, um, there was a lot of flooding, but a lot of the infrastructure was there. But as you started to move out in the eastern edges of that, uh, you started to see the destruction in, in those homes. And for a lot of those people, it's, you know, the capacity to rebuild because they're so far removed from the infrastructure is very, very difficult. I think first they looked at, you know, they assessed what, what was going on. And then now the next phase for them is, is the relief effort in the sense of getting supplies out to them and then rebuilding and starting their lives over. So the Bahamians are very proud people and they stay in their communities. And so as I looked at that infrastructure and looked at that community, I, you know, I wondered to myself, how long will it be before they get electricity back? How long will it be before that infrastructure is built? And so that was the big challenge. Let's talk about that infrastructure because before you and I were discussing, they have new infrastructure there. They had put up brand new telephone poles, I think you mm -hmm. told me, miles and miles of these telephone poles. Yep. Other things that they had done to the islands to sort of harden them because, yes, they are in the path of, of hurricanes and right. they deal with that for many months out of the year. It's nothing new to them. As far as that infrastructure goes, are you seeing plans already by the Bahamian people and by the government and other groups? I know you mentioned uh, a certain, like almost like their FEMA coming together to sort of make these plans to move forward. What have you heard so far? So they are starting that. I mean, first they have to assess. I mean, fortunately, you know, they have great partnerships with the United States and neighbors, so a lot of that was helped through that. But now the Bahamian government is starting to look at, you know, how do we assess this and, you know, what changes do we make and what, what can we build for the infrastructure to bring that back. But it's going to be a challenge because anything that goes over the Bahamas either goes by boat or by plane. So it's not like an Andrew or Irma where people can get in their car and drive from all over the United States and bring supplies there. It all has to be done through that. So it's a huge challenge not only on this side of the ocean but on the other side as well to receive those, all of those supplies, and to make sure they get to the people that need them. And I know they're starting that. I know it's called NEMA, which is the Bahamian Relief Agency. They're starting that infrastructure and building that. So now it's assessing that damage. But this is widespread, so it's not just on Lucaya, it's Marsh Harbor, it's Treasure, it's Green Turtle. So they have that challenge on a lot of different islands as well. So many people, right when the storm hit and after it finally passed, after lingering there for so long, they wanted immediately to jump in to help. A lot of South Floridians wanted to know what they could do. They started cleaning out closets, cabinets, wanting to send their canned goods and clothes. What is it that they really need and that they can actually make use of right now? Because some of these other items, it's going to be difficult to even get them to the people who need them. Yeah, so we went over with a group called Mission Resolve. And we went with uh, uh, Bahamian Paradise Cruise Line. We went over there. And so what they're starting to do is they're starting to really make that assessment on a long-term term basis. So it, is it generators? Is it, you know, supplies that help them rebuild? I think that's going to be some of the pieces that they're going to need. I mean, they're always going to need the water and the food and those pieces, but now it's the rebuilding effort that you have to start and have to look at. And I think, you know, through all these different agencies, as they start to assess that, I think they'll start to look three months, four months, a year from now. What do we need to help immediately? But what's the long-term goal? 
You mentioned that the Bahamian people are a proud people. They, they mm -hmm. want to stay there. They want to rebuild. And in some cases, that's going to be their only choice because the, the White House and the administration has said there will be no temporary protected status for Bahamians. So they will be staying there. Did, in your experience when you were there speaking to people, did you find anyone who wanted to get out, who wanted to come to the United States but is unable to because of the rules in place? Or did you mostly find people saying, we will rebuild and we will come back even stronger? I think where I was in Freeport, you know, I think a lot of people said we want to rebuild. Uh, but the question is, how do you go about doing that? And so whether it's support networks here in the United States, whether it's family here in the United States coming over on the cruise line, they come over there. You know, on our trip, there were relief workers that provided medical supplies, construction, and there were just people that just wanted to help. But there are also a number of family members that were coming over, bringing over supplies, and on the way back, people coming back. So there's that infrastructure set up that helps at all different levels. But the key is now to, to really understand what they need long term and be able to do that. So whether it's financial aid, whether it's generators, whether it's things like that to help them survive and get through it. And then looking at the longer term goal of how do we mitigate this for not for it not to happen again. So is that through upgrading construction, building codes, things like that, like we did after Hurricane Andrew? Mm -hmm. Is it that to be able to say, OK, next time, uh, how do we prevent something like this? There was a house across the street. All the other homes were destroyed. There was one house across the street that was wow. totally intact. They had a metal roof they have the infrastructure Everything built they into need. yes so there is a way to look at that so as you have the advantage now of rebuilding how do we do it better to be able to not go through another disaster like this and of course to keep it top of mind so people know that even though it's not in the headlines it's not right. on the front page it's still something that our friends in the Bahamas are dealing with Mike Zimmer thank you so much for pleasure. taking the time yes, to, to capture those images and to share them with us my thank pleasure you.